Wow, Kevin Sorbo, producer. Director and actor in God's Not Dead and Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist comments, Revelation 911 is an exhilarating ride. This book is unbelievable, a tour de force, the passion, the explosive insights into what is really happening today, I couldn't put it down, Pastor Paul Begley and Troy Anderson are prophetic voices for this generation. Anderson is amazing in his investigative analysis of things happening today and Pastor Begley's revelations are incredible, it is, without a doubt, the prescient narrative of our time. Prepare to be captivated by the mysteries and prophecies unveiled within its pages, get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey of spiritual insight and revelation, don't miss out, grab your copy of Revelation 911 now and delve into the depths of prophecy like never before. Good morning, Jim. Uh, it's great to have you on the show. Good morning. Glad to be here. Well, maybe you could start out if you could tell our audience uh, a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Jim Staley with uh, Passion for Truth Ministries, and uh, God has had me on a journey for about 20 years to really study the Hebraic and original authentic faith of Christianity, which started inside of Judaism. And so I began to ask a lot of questions 20 years ago of where did this come from? Where did this come from? And it all led me back to studying first century Judaism, learning the Hebrew language, and just kind of going from there. So my expertise really is kind of in first century Christianity, and that lends itself to all the feast days and understanding God's prophetic calendar. And of course, that's why we're talking here today about the solar eclipses, the lunar eclipses, and how they just coincidentally line up on all of those calendar dates. And uh, and so, yeah, that's that's kind of the bend of my ministry, teaching Christians the authentic reality of the original uh, flavor of their faith, which is really the Hebrew. And uh, you, you came to my attention over the weekend. My wife showed showed me this uh, YouTube video of you talking about this. Can, can you tell me about that video? I, I guess it's really, really taken off now. Yeah, you know, I, I it's really quite incredible. Um, I, I've been very passionate about the lunar eclipses, uh, the, the the tetrads, and uh, in the past, and how they land on incredibly important, significant dates, and then. When the solar eclipse happened in 2017, I was actually in uh, Marion, Illinois at the X marks a spot. It was extraordinary. And, uh, and in 2024, just looking at how they cross, going, there's got to be something significant about this X. And of course, being a paleo Hebrew guy and studying the front of the book, I saw it as the letter Tav, uh, not really as an X. Uh, and then uh, the 2023 eclipse uh, made the letter Aleph, uh, very clear from anybody that knows paleo Hebrew. And so that kind of put me on a, on a journey to study what other significant events have happened in history uh, surrounding these particular uh, eclipses. And I found some pretty amazing stuff. So I decided to put it in a video and not really knowing what was going to happen of it, but I felt in my spirit that God really was going to touch a lot of people's lives. Well, it's become, you know, uh, the, the most watched video on the internet on the subject. It, it had over two and a half million views in the first week and wow. uh, getting about 300,000 views a day and, and, and growing. So I think people are really interested in this topic and it's really, uh, it's, it's gathered a lot of attention of, Hey, we, maybe we should start paying attention to the sun, moon, and the stars in the sky. Cause he put them there for, for, for times and seasons. And of course that Hebrew word seasons in Genesis one fourteen is, it literally means the appointed feast days of the Lord. So uh, he he's on a calendar that's not quite the same as our American Gregorian calendar, and I think uh, Christianity is starting to wake up to that fact that we might want to start looking at his calendar. Yeah, so so could you talk about the the different uh, verses in the Bible that talk about this, and and what is the calendar that that God is on? Yeah, so it it really does start in in Bereshit or Genesis uh, in chapter one verse fourteen. It says, and I he put the sun, moon, and the stars in the sky for signs and for seasons. And in an in American Western culture, immediately we think of summer, winter, spring, and fall. But in the Hebrew, it actually is the word moedim. And that word in Hebrew, every single person that knows Hebrew, every Jewish person on the planet knows that a moedim is a, is a feast day. It, it's, it's Passover, it's unleavened bread, it's Pentecost, it's first fruits, it's trumpets, it's all of those and, and, and so the, the sun, moon, and the stars were put in the sky so that we would know when to meet with him. So he has these very specific holidays that he gave us. And a lot of us Christians grew up believing that these were Jewish, but God very clearly says in Leviticus 23, these are my feasts, says the Lord, and my people who are called by my name get to celebrate them. These are my anniversaries. These are my preparation for the first and second coming of Messiah. 
which is what they're all about. And then the word signs uh, in in Hebrew in the in Genesis one fourteen, it literally means warning or omen. Uh, it can even mean miracle. And so God put these things up in the sky to as warnings. Uh, for everything from comets to solar eclipses, nothing is coincidence. There's not a, a comet that's flying around in the universe where God goes, oh, look at that. That's interesting. No, like everything he does is, is a pattern for a reason. And so because the ancients knew this, this is how the Magi showed up and knew the Christ child was here. They knew it. They're not even believers, but they knew something significant was happening because the signs in the heavens foretold it. And so uh, we have to be careful to know the difference between a, God's astronomy and astrology, because those are two completely different things. One is evil and says that the stars determine your future, and one where God says, I know the future, and I'm warning you uh, to repent that this is coming. So that, that's just a real small overview of how important the feast days are, how important the signs in the heavens are, and that these solar eclipses are not just something to take your kids out to and go, wow, that's neat. There is something prophetic happening right before our eyes. And if you have ears to hear and eyes to see, and you know, and you study to show yourself approved, you will see it as like you looking in a mirror going, oh my goodness, I've got something on my face. I need to get it off. It's just that clear. Something's happening in this earth right now. And can, can you walk us through the different feast days and, and when, when do those occur on the Gregorian calendar? Yeah, sure. So when you're dealing with what I like to call God's uh, prophetic calendar, they, they're really broken down into two sections. So they're, they're the spring feast days of the Lord, and those are all about the first coming of Christ. See, these, these feast days were designed as warnings and uh, good omens, if you will, to let us know when the first and second coming of the Messiah is going to be. The first four feast days, <clears throat> excuse me, in the spring our Passover. He just so happens to die on Passover, right? Which is just that evening meal connected to the 10th plague in the Exodus, where they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And, uh, and then the second one is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which happens immediately after the night of Passover for seven straight days. Unleavened Bread is when every Jewish person in the world is getting leaven out of their house, which represents sin. So Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew, is pulling sin out of his house by dying on Passover. And then uh, three days later, inside the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, on, on that Sunday after the first uh, Shabbat during Passover week, is first fruits. And while the, the high priest is, is at daybreak taking and cutting the sheaf, uh, cutting the barley and creating a sheaf, and then waving it before God, uh, asking for a great harvest in the fall, Yeshua, Jesus, is cut from the earth, standing before God and asking for a great harvest of souls in the fall. And that's first fruits. And of course, 50 days later to the day, uh, we arrive on what in, in the West, in the Greek language is called Pentecost, but in original Hebrew is Shavuot, which means weeks. And uh, so seven weeks later in a day, 50 days later, which is the number four jubilee, it's the number four total uh, freedom and, and like think of leaving Egypt type of number, uh, we have Shavuot. And that's when the disciples were in the upper room, they were in Jerusalem celebrating the Feast of, of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit comes down in the form of fire, rests on top of their head. And a lot of Christians know that story out of Acts chapter two, but they don't understand the significance of that little thing of fire, that tongue of fire. The reason why it was there is because that same fire was over the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle of wilderness. Oh, and it wow. was representing and saying, this is, this is the holy place. This is where the Holy Spirit resides as in the Holy of Holies. So God was transferring his spirit from the physical temple to us as the temple, and and now the pillar of fire that's supposed to lead us by day and by night is over us, uh, and that is Shavuot, and that's the spring feast days of the Lord that he has completely fulfilled. Every one of those he fulfilled in the first coming, but then you come to the last three, the fall feast days of the Lord, which all represent the second coming of the Messiah, and the second coming of the Messiah happens on the on Rosh Hashanah, what's called today Rosh Hashanah. Originally, it's Yom Teruah, which is the Feast of Trumpets. And this is why the scriptures say that at the sound of a trumpet, 
the dead in Christ will, will rise first. They didn't just make that up. They knew the Messiah has to come on trumpets. As a matter of fact, interesting side note, Jeopardy question, the Jewish people today believe that the Messiah is going to come on Rosh Hashanah. And there's a reason for it, because the prophets foretell it. And in, in Judaism, uh, even if a king of Israel came in, in, into his kingdom uh, in, in, in uh, Nisan or February, March, April, they would not be inaugurated king until Tishrei 1, Rosh Hashanah. And that's absolutely incredible. Just like in America, we have elections in November. They're crowned as president, if you will, in January. That's the way that it works. So how apropos is the Messiah would come back, be crowned as conquering king on this day. And then 10 days later, you have Judgment Day, right? So he comes back on, on, on during that time, that season of, of, of uh, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets. Then he takes his church out of there at the end of the tribulation. There's 10 days, what's called 10 days of awe uh, in, on, the, on the Jewish calendar. And that's the, the, the 10 days of wrath that God pours out to the rest of the earth. And then there's Judgment Day called Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, of course, is the day when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies once a year to make a, a sacrifice for all the sins of Israel. And, uh, and of course, we know that Jesus, Yeshua, did that and became the high priest for us with his own blood once and for all. That's Judgment Day. That will eventually be the great white throne judgment at the end of time. And then five days later is the greatest, most celebrated feast day uh, of, the, of the year. It's an eight-day feast called uh, Sukkot in Hebrew, the Feast of Tabernacles, which is actually when Jesus was born. And there's so many, and that's the Harvest Festival, the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. So as a Christian, by, by not being taught these things, we've been defrauded of all of these amazing connections that are so biblically rooted in theology and in what I call biblical curriculum, right, to teach our children and instead, you know, the enemy through the Roman church came in and just switched it all and gave us all these other holidays uh, that have very little to do with Christ uh, that we have to say, oh, don't, it's not, this is not what Jesus really is. But so with the feast days of God, we don't have to pretend there's nothing to hide. It's so real, so authentic, and it's life changing. And ever since our family's been doing this for 20 years, our, 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 it's, it's changed our entire lives, being able to get on God's prophetic calendar everything flows better when you're on God's calendar. And if you're a husband out there, try getting off your wife's calendar and see how well it goes for you, right? <laughs> the moment you get on her calendar, everything goes better. So that's just a short overview. Well, wow. Yeah, that, that's mind blowing. Uh, okay. So, so let's talk about, um, I, I think in your video, you talked about that. And then you talked about how throughout history, God, God has used signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Can, can you talk about that and, and things we've seen throughout history? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the we we are so behind in the West because we are we are too big for our britches, right? So we're so busy looking at computers and and iPhone tablets uh, that we, we don't look into the stars anymore. So we we don't understand the signs. We don't understand God's prophetic calendar. So if you take God's prophetic calendar out of the picture, you're automatically going to miss things. Even if you're looking in, into the sky, you you won't make the connections. So really what where everything really started is in these blood moon tetrads. There's only been eight of these in all of history uh, in, in, in the last 2,000 years. And what's incredible about them is the, the, what, what is a blood moon tetrad? It is a lunar eclipse, okay, that happens on Passover and Sukkot two years back to back. Those are called tetrads, four of them in a row. One, two, three, four, Passover, Sukkot, Passover, Sukkot. Those happen four times. So a total of, well, I guess it would be 16 different eclipses in pairs of eight. The first time that happened, ladies and gentlemen, was in 1492. Now for Americans, we know exactly what that means. That's, you know, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? America was discovered first drops off in Bahamas and then discovers America. But that is not the actual story of 1492 in Columbus. 1492, these eclipses happen on Passover and Sukkot and Passover and Sukkot on God's prophetic calendar. And it marked a warning and it marked something that was about to happen. And what we normally see is war or earthquakes on these eclipses. And, and sure enough, that year was the year of the Spanish Inquisition. This is not what Americans are taught in school. I never was taught this. 
but this is when all the Jews were expelled from Spain. And coincidentally, the day that Christopher Columbus sailed from Spain was the very day that all of the Jews were required to leave. And this is called scholar caused scholars to look into this and find out that Christopher Columbus was actually Jewish. That's why every single person on board minus one was Jewish wow. uh, during, during that entire sailing. Now that changes American history, my friends. Uh, so that happened 1492. Then you go all the way forward to 1948. Can we think of anything that happened in 1948? <laughs> the rebirth of Israel happened in 1948 as that, as the eclipse has happened in 48 and 49. And then in 1967 and 68, it happened again. And what happened there? That was the six day war. That was when Jerusalem became the capital of Israel. Massive prophetic events are happening. Then you go all the way to 2014 and 15, which was the last one. Mark Biltz made that one famous. Uh, now, we, it seems that almost nothing seemed to happen hugely significant until you look at it and realize that ISIS uh, came to the forefront, the Ebola outbreak. We've got COVID that happened in that seven-year time period. The first war with Hamas, ironically, happened during that time period. Incredible things happened uh, during that. Uh, COVID alone was, was a world and game changer. It was a setting up of the natural system of the beast. And so those were the lunar eclipses. Then when you get over and, and you see, wow, there's a pattern, clear pattern, 100% accuracy. Then when you go to the solar eclipses, it gets scary because in the solar eclipses, the significance of the 2017 solar eclipse is that it had never happened out of, I think it was 12,000 eclipses. Not a single one had gone directly over the United States only and never any other country. Oh, wow. So in 2017, the great American eclipse started in Salem, Oregon and went through seven different Salem's. Which, if, if you're if you're new to biblical, you know, understanding of, of names and etymology, Salem is the ancient name of Jerusalem. It's Shalom, is what it is. It's the city of Shalom, right? So, so Salem is a very big deal that this thing came across the United States and went over seven of the thirty-six Salem's. But then you have the 2024 eclipse that comes back uh, across from Mexico the other direction, and it forms an X, and it went through another twenty-six. Uh, Salem's, meaning that the both eclipses together are going through 33 of the 36 Salem's in the United States, which is very, very prophetic because the number 33 is immediately connected to Christ. It's immediately connected to uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. It was the age he was when he died. Uh, and so the, the the significance of the of the solar eclipse of 2017 and 24 is big enough. But what I wanted to know was where's the history of this come from. So I went and looked at every solar eclipse I could find that was in totality, a total eclipse over the United States and discovered that every single time that we had one of these, which was, is not very many, I think it's eight to in total, every one of them, there was a war, every single one, whether it's a war of independence in 1778, uh, of course, 1776, but you've got the solar eclipse that confirmed that. So what I found is these solar eclipses either come right before something insanely huge on the timeline historically, or they come right after to confirm. So there are warnings and confirmations. You have the the, the you have the the uh, the War of Independence. You have the Civil War. You've got the Vietnam War. All of these happen uh, inside of these solar eclipses. And then probably the scariest one for me because I live here in the Midwest, right outside of St. Louis. And we have the largest fault line in the United States called the New Madrid Fault Line. In 1811, there was a solar eclipse that was combined. Listen, uh, guys, this is really, really amazing. It was combined with a comet in the sky and that was seen for, for over a year. And, and people were wondering, what is this comet? They haven't seen it in a thousand years. Matter of fact, I think the last time it, it, they saw it was during the time of Egypt. Uh, it was thousands of 3,000 years, I think it was, that, that that comet had not been seen. And it showed back up again. And then there was an X that went across the United States in, up in the Northeast. And 30 days, excuse me, 60 days later, 60 or 90 days later, I can't remember off the top of my, my head, the largest earthquake in the history of the continental United States happened uh, in, 18, in uh, December of that year. So we're talking about the New Madrid fault line that erupted 
And then the War of 1812 came out the same thing. Every time we had a solar eclipse like this, there was a war and or a major earthquake that happened. That earthquake was so large, Troy, that it caused the Mississippi River to go backwards and it leveled everything within a 200 mile radius and it set off the Liberty Bell uh, on the East Coast. That's how powerful this earthquake was. There's never been anything like it in the world, uh, according to uh, the, the, the seismologists that, that, that record these things. So at the end of the day, uh, what, what do we expect to happen? Well, we expect that Something incredible is on the timeline because not only do we have the same X coming over the United States, but dead center over a place called Little Egypt uh, of all places. There's no other place in the world called Little Egypt that has a place right dead center called a Devil's Kitchen, Lake Egypt, Giant City National Park. All of these things are happening, but there is another comet that's in the sky, and this comet just so happens to be nicknamed the devil's comet. I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. And it, it only comes around once every 71 years. And the Soros 139 comet, which was, the, excuse me, solar eclipse in, in 2017, only comes, uh, only happens 71 times. So there, there is so much that's happening here. That's why if you haven't seen the video, go watch the video on my channel at Passion for Truth Ministries YouTube channel. You'll see it there. It's got millions of views. I go through all of this, but we are in right now, I think, a great awakening. And Troy, that doesn't even take in consideration the red heifers that are about to be sacrificed for the first time in thousands of years, setting up the last temple sacrifice that Daniel 9 talks about, where the Antichrist stops a daily sacrifice that can't be started until the red heifer is sacrificed. We are living in crazy times for sure. You know, just putting all these pieces of the puzzle together, what do you think is the odds that all this could happen randomly? This could just be a, you know, a gigantic coincidence. Yeah, one in zero, one in zero. <laughs> it's not possible. Like, it's just, there's no way. That was the one thing. I am such a grounded person. Everybody that knows me knows that I'm a skeptic. I'm the, like, the firstborn analytical engineer type of guy, Bible nerd. And my wife constantly brings these different things. I'm like, that's a conspiracy theory. That's not true. That mathematically is not possible. So I'm the big, uh, and I live in the show me state, right? So I'm skeptical of everything. But as I was studying this and going through this, Troy, I got to be honest, like my heart began to beat a little bit. Uh, for the very first time, I began to think we, this, this could be it. Like this could be the beginning of the birth pains of the end of time. Now, I've always believed in my lifetime that I'm going to see the return of the Messiah, where Christians are very excited about it. I, I honestly am not. I understand biblical prophecy enough to know that I'm excited about meeting him, but getting to that point is like a woman saying, I'm excited about giving birth to my child, but I really don't want to go through the labor that it's going to go through and the pain, because uh, look, there's not going to be an epidural. And that's a big farce in Christianity, thinking that we're just going to be taken out of here and there's just never going to be any pain. Like, no, that's not what our Bible says. I mean, the Bible says that, quite frankly, like tribulation and trials, we're to consider them pure joy because they wrink, they iron out the wrinkles in us. They, pre they prepare us. They cause us to search for God. I don't want to be taken out of here, quite frankly. I know I'm not ready to meet my maker. I need to be pressed more and more to get the sin and, and the pride out of my life. Uh, but I, th there's no way it's impossible for there to be any coincidence here. Something is definitely happening. And when you look at the war in the Middle East, OK, in 2023, there was an annular eclipse that ran across the southwest of the United States, going right over uh, a Texas into a, a place called Jonah and Nineveh uh, city. And that particular eclipse happened right at the beginning of the war of Gaza right now that's happening in, in the Middle East, which could easily spiral out of control into a nuclear world war, which is what Putin is talking about right now, that if NATO continues to stick, stick their finger in his side his side, and start funding a war, which is illegal for us to do in Ukraine against all international law, but we're doing it anyway, and he knows it, this whole thing, for the very first time in 50 years, we're talking about nuclear war, we're talking about Iran and its proxies uh, right in, in the hip of, of Israel, and Bible prophecy is setting the stage through a new uh, third temple that won't be built 
likely, but it, they don't need a third temple to start doing sacrifices. And a lot of people don't understand that. They don't need a, a third temple. They just need the open air uh, to be their temple. They already have an altar built. They already have a menorah built. They already have the Levitical priest uh, that are signed up and completely trained. Everything is ready to go for temple sacrifices. And on top of that, we've got lunar eclipses happening on Purim this last weekend, solar eclipses happening here on April 8th on Nissan 1. And Nissan 1 is the day in history on biblical calendar. It's the beginning of God's year. It's his new year. And Nissan 1 was the day that they cleansed the temple in, in ancient Israel when Nehemiah came back. All of this is out of control coincidences. And it got my heart palpitating again, thinking, oh my goodness, American Christians worldwide, really, better wake up. We better start doing Bible things in Bible ways, putting down any kind of compromise or paganism and start coming back to God in droves, or we might find ourselves on the other side of Jonah's uh, voice, and we'll be the ones of Nineveh that are being preached to, and I pray to God that we repent here. <clears throat> you know, um, I did an interview with Billy Graham in 2013 for a seven-part World Net Daily service, series on, on the end times and possibly revival. And, uh, and so Billy Graham said, he, he talked about the story of Nineveh. He said, when God sent the prophet Jonah to Nineveh, that he warned them of impending judgment and the king and the people repented. And Billy Graham said he believed the same thing could happen again today, this time in America. And I was so inspired by that interview that in my second book, uh, Tropocalypse, we actually called for a National Day of Repentance. Uh, a friend of ours, Reverend Kevin Jessup, uh, ran with that. He networked with a who's who of faith political leaders. He persuaded Rabbi Jonathan Kahn to be the spokesman, and the event actually happened. It was return, National and Global Day of September 2020, on the National Ball. About a quarter million people showed up. Forty million people watched that, and uh, so now we have this 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 prophetic sign in the heavens, uh, and it goes through some of these cities now called Nineveh. So can you can you talk about uh, the the Nineveh? The, so the first eclipse went through all these cities called Salem, and I guess the second one also does, but also goes through these towns called Nineveh. What do you think is the significance of that? Well, absolutely. And I was talking to Kevin uh, the other day about this, and 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 he agrees. Now, now th there is a lot of misunderstanding out there in the internet, because someone started a graphic where it says that, that the solar eclipse of 2024 goes through all seven Ninevehs. Well, there's actually only six, and there's one in, in Canada. And, and it's not exactly true. The, it, it goes through two. So in totality, the umbra, that shadow that goes across the United States, there's two Ninevehs that it goes through. Now, why is that significant? The other four are right outside. So they're within 80% view of the eclipse. And I believe it's incredibly significant why God only allowed it to go through two. And here's why. Because first of all, the number four in, in, in biblical numerology literally means the four corners of the earth. It's always connected to the earth. So there is a global warning to all the, the, the Ninevehs around the earth. This is not about America, my friends. God seems to always show up prophetically and speak to the man in charge. The one who's the superpower of that day is normally the one that God speaks to, right? So it's always Israel and the superpower. That's why there's Nebuchadnezzar. That's why there is Caesar. There is why it's Pharaoh. Uh, the, always a part of the story. It's always the superpower and Israel are the two main parts to the story. So people say that the United States is not in prophecy. It's simply not true. It's always been the superpower and Israel. So what we see here in the United States with 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 uh, Nineveh and uh, and Jonah is God goes through two. And I believe prophetically that means that there are going to be uh, there are going to be countries that are probably within the, the NATO alliance that are completely dark, like they, they've completely lost their way, and there is a prophetic judgment that is going to, to befall them. Uh, and then I believe that there are four that, are, that separate around the four corners of the earth where God says there is enough light, right? This is kind of like the letters in Revelation to the cities and uh, uh, to the, uh, the churches in Revelation that you've lost your first love, but I'm giving you a chance. So you're not in total darkness. I'm not hiding my light completely from you, but I am letting you know that that my shadow is going to uh, is going to come across you. You need to repent. So one of the significant things that I personally see is although everyone is talking doom and gloom about this this eclipse, 
I believe it's a little bit differently than that because the patterns in scripture, I, I'm kind of autistic when it comes to uh, patterns in scripture. I, I love finding patterns and what you discover, and you actually mentioned it, Troy, perfectly, what you discover, discover in the Bible and throughout history, anytime that there is war, anytime that there is a judgment, <clears throat> there will also simultaneously on a parallel track be revival. And so what God is doing is he's placing his mark. There is an Aleph all of the 2017, the 2024, and the 2023 eclipse literally formed the ancient Paleo-Hebrew Aleph uh, over the, the United States. And Aleph, in the, that's where we get the Aleph Bet uh, from, because the second letter in Hebrew is Bet. What, what, what Aleph meant was the strength of the leader in ancient Paleo-Hebrew. It literally meant the strength of the leader. And the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Tav which is a, in literally a form of an X or, or in, in Abraham's time would have been upright in, in form of a cross, which is incredible. So God is forming the Aleph Toph, which is the sign of, it was the signature of, of Yeshua. This is the signature of Jesus over America. I don't think it's a bad thing to have God sign the name of his son over America necessarily. But anytime you have the signature of Christ, the last time we saw the signature of Christ was 2,000 years ago at the cross. When the blood was shed, it was the blood frequency signature of Christ that hit the ground, and two things happened. Immediately, there was an earthquake, and there, the, uh, there was an eclipse in the sky, and the temple uh, 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 curtain was torn. The Holy of Holies was opened for the first time for everyone to see, and there was judgment in the land. The, simultaneously, along with the judgment, was there was a freedom there because there's a judgment and the freedom of all the slaves got to come free. So those that were bound in sin got to be free. And the same thing is going to happen. And I want to just, this is not a prophecy. This is just a historical accurate statement. What I'm about to say is this judgment that's coming over America, this warning is going to bring about, I believe the beginning of the end days, but simultaneously on a parallel track is going to kickstart the greatest revival that this world has ever seen since 2000 years, because we've been hijacked by the Roman church from very, very early on. And Christians today have forgotten the roots of their faith. And so we just, uh, because God has given us so much grace, uh, we have, we, we, we kind of have gotten complacent to believe that God is okay with everything that we do. And, and that's like saying, well, God was okay with the, the Israelites uh, uh, sacrificing to and worshiping the golden calf just because he didn't kill him for the first four hours. But he eventually got a little upset about that, and they, and they learned their lesson. So I think we're at a place where, Troy, people are going to start coming back by the millions to learn more about how to celebrate God's feast days, how to get more in alignment and get more Christ out of Christ. Because right now we've got millions of people under one giant faucet just begging for a drop of water, and it, it's full on, but our pipes aren't fully connected. So I think Nineveh, the whole story behind that is, look, it is time to repent. And remember one last thing, the prophecy was to, to Jonah, it's judgment, it's judgment, they're going to die. Jonah did not want uh, Nineveh to repent. So he just went and told them, look, here's the judgment, you're going to die. And they repented on their own and changed history. They were supposed to die, but God and his grace because of repentance changed his mind, just like Moses changed God's mind on the mountain when he wanted to kill the Israelites. So I think we're in a place where there is judgment written in the heavens, and it's up to God's people. It's not up to the Democrats. It's not up to Republicans, liberals, conservatives. It's up to us whether or not we repent. We are the ones that God says, if my people repent, then I'll heal their land. Well, whatever land you live in around the world it's time for us to repent. And we've been arrogant for quite frankly, thousands of years to think that it's everybody else that needs to repent. You know, for uh, people watching this uh, video, what would you like to, you know, talk to them about the, the you know, if, if they're not saved, uh, what, what they need to do to, to get right with God. And, and could you, could you pray with people? Absolutely. You know, in the, in the solar eclipse video for the very first time in any documentary video like this, I've ever done, I felt inspired to give the gospel, because I know that that video is going to go out globally to saved and unsaved alike. So if you are watching this video today, my friend, and you don't know Christ, uh, let me just give you something that will give you a little bit of meat to what I'm about to tell you. That I told you that the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet was Tav. Well, well, that, that letter is 
is actually also a Hebrew word, and it literally means mark. The word mark in Hebrew is the word tav, which is also a letter. And at the end of the time, the Bible says, uh, there's, a, there's a story in the Bible that says that, that if he tells the angel, go throughout Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of all the people that hate sin and, 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 are, and, are, and love me, and then I will protect them from the plague that's coming. And let me ask you a question. Right in the middle of this solar eclipse, God is making a mark across the United States. And in this mark, if you have this mark on your life, on your heart, on your spiritual forehead, you will be protected at the end of time. So let me ask you a question, brother, sister. If you were to die right now, do you have the mark of God on your life? Will he see the blood of Christ in your life? Are you following him to where you can say without a shadow of a doubt, if I died right now, I absolutely, when I'm resurrected, I would go into heaven. God would allow me to come in. If there's any doubt in your heart at all, then you're not because the one that has the mark knows it. And so I want to just encourage you. It's very simple. If you don't know Christ, you need to, first of all, just repent of your sins and say, God, I need you. The salvation starts with just recognizing that you need him and, 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 and that you can't do this on your own. And when you say, God, I ask your son, Jesus, Yeshua, to come into my life. I recognize I'm a sinner. I've broken his law and I need him to be my savior. And when you ask him to come into your life he, and forgive you of your sins, he not only will take away the thousand pound monkey that's on your back, that, that's causing all the shame and, and, and all of the weight that's on your shoulders, it'll immediately come off your back. But if you sincerely invite him into your life, then the next thing you need to do is just ask him, Lord, guide me and lead me and teach me how to follow you. I don't want to do my things anymore. I don't want to follow my mind, will, and emotions. I want your mind, will, and emotions to be mine. I want the best that you ever had for me. I want to serve you. This is the prayer of salvation is asking Yeshua Jesus to come into your life and then ask him to forgive you of your sins and to assist you into serving him. So let's do that right now. Troy, is that okay if I pray with people? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Absolutely. If that's you out there, would you just pray with me right now this prayer? Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Yeshua, I come before you right now. And I ask you to come into my heart, come into my holy of holies and make me new. I know that I need a savior and you're it. I agree with what you said that you died for me and rose for me. I accept you into my life. I believe in you and I ask you to save me right now. And I ask you to give me your mind, will, and emotions so that I can be a best representative of you on this earth that I can be. Thank you for saving me, God, and giving me rest and joy both in this life and the next. Amen. Brother, sister, if you just prayed that prayer, you are saved. Now you need to find a good Bible-believing church or a church online, get in the word of God and begin to just take time out every day, pray. When you make a mistake, ask him to forgive you and change your ways. The day is coming, says the Lord, when he's going to visit earth again, and we all need to be ready. Uh, Jim, it's been a great honor to have you on the show today. Uh, can you tell our audience about uh, where they can find out more about you and your ministry? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to our website at passionfortruth.com. That's passionfortruth.com. Uh, or you can text us, text the word uh, feast day, uh, F-E-A-S-T-D-A-Y to 844-763-9543. That's 844-763-9543. And we'll give you a free PDF download of all the prophetic feast days. Or you can go to our YouTube channel at Passion for Truth Ministries. We've got hundreds of videos like this that will encourage you and grow you in the faith. Well, uh, thank you so much, Jim. Uh, this has been a very, very exciting and interesting uh, uh, interview today. Thanks for letting me, let me be on your program. I really appreciate it. It was a blessing on my end. God bless you. In Revelation 9-1-1, Paul Begley and Troy Anderson boldly confront the pressing questions on many people's minds. Are we living in the end times? How do current events line up with biblical prophecies about the future? This book offers stunning and thought-provoking insights that connect passages from the book of Revelation to today's headlines. 
From the COVID-19 pandemic to artificial intelligence to UFOs, the authors examine how modern developments may be paving the way for the Antichrist and One World Government. This book will give you much to think about regarding the state of the world and the ultimate direction of history. Revelation 911 is a clear call to prepare spiritually for whatever lies ahead. An inspiring and encouraging quote from Pastor Jimmy Evans, founder of endtimes.com and author of Tipping Point, The End Is Here. Thank you visionary Pastor Jimmy Evans, for your inspiring words. Join us as we embark on an illuminating journey into the prophetic with renowned Bible prophecy expert Pastor Paul Begley and the prolific Pulitzer Prize-nominated journalist Troy Anderson. Confront pressing questions of our time and discover hope for the future. Don't miss out. Order your copy of Revelation 911 now and prepare to be inspired, enlightened, and empowered. For more information, visit www.revelationwatchers.com and delve deeper into the insights awaiting you. Don't miss this opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of the book of Revelation and its impact on our world. Order Revelation 911 on Regenery Publishing, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target.com, Walmart, Books A Million, Hudson Booksellers, or most anywhere books are sold. And be part of the journey towards greater awareness, hope, and encouragement in the midst of challenging times. Additionally, prestigious bookstores like Harvard Bookstore and Book Soup in Hollywood carry the book. Take the next step in your exploration today.